building, managing and operating your own platform cost resources. There is always a question if should you build one from scratch or buy a product that will take you five steps ahead. In this video, we are going to list the consideration that you should ask yourself before answering the question, should I build one or buy one and list all the available options in the market today. Let's go. Before jumping into the solutions, let's talk a little bit about the problem. And the problem is that we do want to deliver a really good quality platform, but we want to do that as quickly as possible and with the lowest resources as possible. And for that, we should always ask ourselves, should we buy one or build one? And the answer is always mixed. You, even if you buy a platform, you need to build something on top of it. So let's talk a little bit about what are the considerations that should help you to answer the question if you should build one or buy one. The first thing is maintenance and operations. When you're running your own platform, there is always things that you need to manage and actually operate. You need to take care of the database, the load balancer, the application servers, uh, maybe even for some infrastructure components that are not really part of your delivery. And those things are kind of maintenance operations that are not part of your critical path into delivering a good quality platform. But take toil from your team and you should consider if you do have a resource to actually support that within your own team or you want a product that will take it as a managed service. The second thing is always delivery constraints. Sometimes we do have a deadline or a goal end date that we should deliver something by it. Obviously, if you need to build or buy, you should understand what is your path through the date and how you will make a successful deadline uh, by thinking, is it something that you can solve by having and putting money resources or more people, manpower into the team. But always make sure that you deliver what you try to do on time with the minimum resources available. The third thing is unique requirements. For every team and organization, there is something unique. It can be about the way to deliver software, how they collaborate between teams, how they build their own software and ship it. There is something unique about your own company and your own team, and your platform should support that. So you need, before you select if you want to buy or build a product, you want to decide if you have something unique and if you want to support it on your own platform. The fourth thing is the ecosystem compatibility. If you're going to build something from scratch, you want to have the capacity to actually build the integration, make sure it integrated well. But when you are buying one, you should ask yourself like, do this product actually support the integration I want in place? And when you buy the product, you will get it with the integrations in place. So ecosystem compatibility and how you want to integrate your platform with the ecosystem it's super important consideration. Moving to knowledge and expertise. As everything in engineering works, we do need to understand how much do we know? Have we done something like that before? And what are the chances and risks that we will be able to deliver the platform on time? And that's really, really critical. If you do have the knowledge, expertise, and self-learner abilities, maybe you want to take it more to the build direction. But if you don't have it at all and it's the first time for everyone, maybe buying something and actually building just on top of it will set you in a better pace and start point. The next thing is resources. Some teams got more manpower than budget. If they have more manpower, they will be able to maybe build something much more bigger and take into advantage the fact that they have people to build that instead of teams that do have a lot of budget but very low on manpower. And for them, buying something will help them to gain a big advantage based on the budget they have and the lowest manpower resources. So you should consider what do you have more and what you are capable to do with the resources which are manpower and budget. The last thing is culture. And for something, it can be a non-issue, but for the others, it can be a really big issue. 
Why is that? Because some culture in organization uh, do prefer to actually build everything on their own. So for example, if this kind of organization decide to buy a product, that will look different for the developers in the organization. And that's a big issue because what you want is to make sure that when you deliver the platform or the portal, you want people to actually use it and accept it. And if your culture actually drives to one direction for building everything on your own or prefer a strategy of buying ones, and that will affect your adoption and usage of the platform, you should take that into the consideration before deciding to buy or build your platform. After understanding the considerations of build versus buy, now we are going to talk about the solutions. We are going to start with building everything on your own and we are going to make it all the way through all the solutions available in the market through buying everything you can and build your own logic on top of it. The first option is to build everything on your own. You would have a custom solution tailor-made for your own use case, but you will need to develop every part of it. The platform team will be responsible for the UI, the backend, the infrastructure, the database, everything about the delivery of that will be owned by the platform team. Five years ago, it was the main solution in the market because there were not much of a product available out there. And you can see companies, for example, like Spotify, when they developed Backstage, it was an internal tool for their own solution. And after a while, they decided to make it an open source. But they invested the resources to create their own platform inside a company. What are the pros for that? So you can create a custom made platform with everything you want in place. You would have your unique capabilities in it that will help you to deliver a quality platform for your own organization, tailor made for what you wanted to achieve. You can also guarantee the roadmap, something that you cannot guarantee when you're buying a product and the company that owns the product decide what will be on the roadmap and what they want to invest on. Sometimes what you want to get and the product roadmap are aligned, but sometimes they are not really aligned and you need to wait a long time for the capabilities that you want to have in place or find a flexible and unique solution. And what are the cons for that? First of all, you need a lot of resources. You need at least a team that will own the platform, develop it, and make it a really, really successful product inside the company. You cannot have two or three people in there. Maybe you can, but you definitely need to go with four and five people that will be a team, the platform team, to make it a successful solution. The second thing is that you may going to develop duplicate solution to what you have in the market. So for example, if you decide to build something, and then a company actually decide to launch a product which have the same capabilities as you have and you develop it on your own, you invest the resources for that, but you can actually buy and get everything from a different company in a better quality, uh, maybe buying that would be a better decision. So you're going to develop duplicate code that someone else will develop and that's a big problem because you invest resources in something that is not unique in the market. Moving into our second option, which is building your own platform using an open source project. And by that, you will be able to get some of the core capabilities from the open source project and build your use cases on top of it. The main project or open source project for building IDPs is Backstage. And if you don't know Backstage, you should watch one of my previous videos explaining about Backstage architecture or how to deploy it. What is good about Backstage is that it's already proven by enterprise large companies like Spotify and a lot that you can find out there that already implemented it and you can learn about it. The cons is that it's an open source project and you will need to maintain it and actually operate within your own organization and it's an open source grade product. So you will need to turn it into something really successful in your own organization. So if we are talking about what are the pros, uh, first of all, the core is free. You don't need to put manpower or money in order to get the core capabilities of Backstage. You can go out there and just download it and use it. 
The second thing is that it's a mainstream open source project, which means there are many contributors to it and it's gaining adoption and also getting developed by some other people. If you are aligned with the own use case, you are going to gain by it and not being thrown to the trash project. What are the cons of Backstage? So first of all, it's a non-baked project. What it means is that you would need, first of all, to invest some resources in order to deploy it. And then also you would need to have put in resources in order to make it fit into your own use case. And that costs, as I said, a lot of resources. It's not that big that you can actually deploy and use it immediately. You would need to make it usable on your own. The second thing is that it's very structured. You would need to follow backstage capabilities. You would need to follow backstage structure and how they organize the project. It can fit into your own use case. It can not fit into your use case. You would need to actually find out and define it on your own and based on that decide if it's a good project for you to use. Another good solution, especially if you do like backstage, but do not like the operational cost and risk in Backstage is to use Backstage Manage Solution. And by that, I mean that there are companies and products that takes Backstage, put it into a SaaS offering model, which means it manage and operate by them, and you can use Backstage and build your own use cases on top of it. One of the company that does that is Rody. And what they do is they take backstage, they do their modification, their deployment, and offer you it as a managed solution. What is really good about it is that it removes backstage operational cons. So if you talk that backstage is really hard to manage, they can remove and take it if you pay them and buy their product. What is also good is that the pace of development is actually tied to backstage. So if they are going backstage in the roadmap, going to a direction where you want it to be, Rody will be there as well, beside having their own development and own addition to backstage. So it can be accelerate the delivery and the value you give to your users. What are the downsides of such a solution? So what is good is that it removes the operational cons, but there are cons in backstage that are hard to remove on a managed solution. For example, the flexibility of the component and the catalog in backstage. If you want to have something more flexible, integrated, uh, you will need to consider that. And it's really hard to change how backstage manage their own software catalog in such a solution. So, if you do consider and you think Backstage is a good solution, but you don't want to move into the operational cost, Manage Backstage can be a really good solution. If you don't think that Backstage is a really good solution for you because of some other needs, you may need to consider other options. Moving out to another solution in the market, which is fully managed open portals. And one of the companies that offers that is Port. And by fully managed, I mean it's a fully managed solution. You don't need to take care of anything regarding maintenance operation. It's also not backstage based. So you're not limited to backstage capabilities and abilities. And the last thing, it's open, which means you can control, adjust, and change almost anything in the portal, which allows you to define your use cases using that. So, Let's list the pros and the cons of such a product. First of all, it's flexible and open, which means you can achieve your goal and adjust and change the portal to fit your own use cases, which means more use cases will allow you to accelerate your delivery using a product like Port. It's also managed, so by allocating budget, you can reduce the manpower uh, doing such a project, and you need to build only a thin layer on top of your portal or the product that you buy from port. The cons about it is that it's open, but not open source. So you cannot run such a product on your own. Uh, and it's also limited to port decision regarding roadmap and delivery of capabilities. And you cannot adjust and change it by community decision. They are really open about the roadmap, but it's not open as open source projects. 
our last solution in this market is fully managed portal, which means, first of all, it's a fully managed SaaS solution. But what is interesting is that most of the big companies in this field actually moved from being just a service catalog to being an IDP. Uh, Worthable mentioned is Ops Level and Cortex. And what is good about that is that they do have a really wide offering in the service catalog area. So if your team really want to have a really good service catalog, buying such a solution and just adjust the base needs into what you think should be a good standard, the golden standard for the organization, it's a really small task to have. Uh, the pros of such a solution will be a major service catalog. You will get a lot of the capabilities around services and the software catalog pretty out of the box and better included. And the other thing is the wide variety of the integration they have that already tested with their logos and really brand users, which is great, which means that if you want to achieve that, that will be a good offering. The cons is around flexibility and what you can achieve using such a solution. And it really depends on what use cases you want to implement. And if you want to implement the core thing in this kind of product, that would be good. And if you are looking for a different core capabilities in the platform, maybe using another solution will be better for you. Those were the main solutions in the market. And it was a very shallow comparison. There is a depth for every one of the product and the pros and cons for each one of them. I will encourage you to follow every one of them and actually test your requirements against any one of the product and make sure that you pick the best decision for you. So by now you should have the list of consideration and what you should think when you are going to make a decision and some sort list of offering so you can go compare them and actually go into the depth. I encourage you to follow each one of them and keep in pace with the community because things are always changing, especially in the software industry. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.